Welcome to another video. Let's clear all the questions that I have received in comments and in emails about the whole tetration thing. So if you're one of those who actually asked the question or you're wondering about some things that I never mentioned, especially when I talked about um, the infinite tetration of the square root of two, why the answer was not equal to four, or what else can you do with the Lambert W function, or whatever you want to talk about, I think this video is going to answer many of the questions, maybe not all of them. And thank you for your comments and thank you for your support. I typically do um, calculus problems or maybe algebra or pre-calculus, pre but I think that many of the subscribers that joined this channel are really not calculus students. They're just interested in math. So I'm going to take the time and do what you want me to do. So let's get into the video. So let's start by addressing the whole infinite tetration thing. And when you say infinite tetration, you're just saying that you're going to raise up a number, you're going to have a stack, a tower of a number that goes on forever and never ends. And typically, if you just think of it intuitively, if you keep raising a number to a power, that number is going to get big. As you can see uh, what happens with tetration, it just explodes into infinity. So you're not supposed to get a number here that is not infinity, but it is the way numbers work. Some numbers, if you do this to them, they're going to give you another number, as in the case of the square root of 2. If you have an infinite tetration of the square root of 2, you end up with 2 as your answer. It's a fascinating result. Are there other numbers that behave like that? The answer is yes. Are there numbers that cannot behave like that? The answer is yes. So what are those numbers? That's where we want to start. So let's assume we don't know what number behaves like that. We just want to see how to get this answer. If you have an infinite tetration because you have it an infinite number of times, if you reduce it by one, it doesn't make any difference. So I can, if I delete this guy here, I still have an infinite number of it. So then the answer does not change because it's infinity. Then I can write x raised to power an infinite number of x's, which is going to give me y. Now, this is a trick you use in this case. Now, how do I know this is going to work? I don't know it's going to work. Okay, it doesn't work for every number, but it works for some numbers, and those numbers we want to find. So, this is the same thing as this, and what I have here is what is here, and it's the same thing that's here. But let's solve it. So, how do we solve it? Quickly. Let me write it this way. y is equal to x to the y. So I'm going to divide both sides by this. So this becomes y divided by x to the y. And that will be if what I have left will be 1 on this side. Let me rewrite this. Mathematically, this is the same thing as y times x to the negative y equals 1. I haven't changed anything. I just applied the law of exponent here. Okay, so y times x to the negative y is equal to 1. I'm going to employ the Lambert W function because that is what helps us solve problems like this, especially with infinite tetration. As you can see, you have y as a base, you also have it as an exponent. That's very difficult to solve, so Lambert W function helps us. And remember what we say, that for Lambert W function, you have to have something that looks like this e and then this raised to this. You need to write whatever you're trying to solve in this form and we're going to get there soon. Now watch this. It is possible for me to write this expression like this. I need you to pay attention to this term here, the x to the negative y. I'm going to rewrite it in terms of e. So let's do that here. So x to the negative y, watch what I'm doing. I'm going to put a natural log here and put e here. Remember that this will cancel this out, so I haven't changed anything. But based on what I've done, I can bring down this negative y here. So this expression is e to the negative y natural log of x. And this is the same thing as x to the negative y. 
this is this. You see, I introduced this and this at the same time because this cancels this and this is the expression. So what I'm gonna do is I will rewrite this expression and write it this way. I say this is y times e to the negative y times the natural log of x equals one. Okay, we're almost done with this one. Now, see what happens. Remember, for you to use the lambda w function or the omega function, you have to have something e to the something. We already have e to the something, but I need this to be exactly what is on top. So what do I need? I need to multiply this by negative natural log of x. If I multiply this by negative ln of x, I'm gonna have negative, let's move it down, negative y natural log of x e to the negative y natural log of x will be equal to, I multiply this also by negative natural log of x. Beautiful. I can introduce the Lambert W function. Okay, now if you're not aware of what the Lambert W function does, I think I explained it in another video, uh, but I will still use it here and explain a little. So at this point, I'm gonna take the W of both sides. Nice. Remember, if you plug this into a lambda w function, you come up with just what is here or what is here, just pick one. Negative y ln of x is equal to the w of, I wanna rewrite this because it looks nicer. How do you think we can write negative natural log of x? Remember that this expression, let's quickly see it here. Negative natural log of x is the same thing as negative one times the natural log of x. But this negative one can go up here. This is the natural log of x to the minus one, which is the same thing as the natural log of one over x. So this is the version that I like writing instead of having so many negative lines. Okay, so what I have here is gonna be the natural log of one over x. Nice. So what am I trying to find? Remember, I am trying to find y because the only thing I need now is to divide both sides by negative natural log of x. So I'm gonna have y is equal to this divided by negative natural log of x. But remember, I said that negative natural log of x can be written this way. That's how I like to write mine. So I'm gonna write this as the w of the natural log of the reciprocal of x divided by I'm gonna divide this by negative natural log of x, which is the natural log of one over x. And this is the answer. Whenever y exists, this is how to get it. Okay, remember when you have a formula, it doesn't mean you can just plug anything into the formula, right? So, not every time you have an infinite tetration that you're gonna plug something in here. There has to be a condition. What is it that you can plug in? What is it that you can write this way and then you're gonna get an actual finite number? Because if I put 10 here, it's not gonna work because 10 to the 10 to the 10 to the 10 is gone. You can't chase it, it's infinity. You can't do that with three. You can't do that with two. Can you do that with two? No, it goes to infinity. So what number can you put here so that an infinite titration of it exists? This is the finite value of any infinite tetration of x, if x will work. Welcome to part two of today's show. Do you remember this? If you take this limit, you're gonna get e. Now, whenever you're dealing uh, with any mathematical concept and you keep seeing natural log showing up, natural log showing up, you have to have some secret suspicion that E must have something to do with what we're working on. And that's true. Because, you know, the first time I came across this formula for the value of E, that it is the limit if N keeps increasing and goes to infinity, you will never go past E. But you see, the cool thing about E is that whenever you are using this formula to compute a convergent value, the biggest possible value you can get for y is e. You cannot go beyond e if you really need 
a finite value. Now, if you like infinity, oh, you can plug in any number. But if you want a number you can deal with, you can relate with, E is the most that you can get. So, the maximum you can get out of this formula that we just obtained is E. If you plug in anything that gives you anything bigger than E, boom, everything goes to infinity, past E. So, your Y is at most E. So, let's do that. Let's say Y is less than or equal to E. That is the most that you can get. The biggest value. So, let's go back to the question. If the most that this formula can give us is E, what can X be so that we will get E? It is easy. Remember how we calculated this initially? We said X raised to power Y is equal to E equals Y. So, if our Y is E, that's the maximum, Let's write x raised to power e is equal to e. Then it means if we take the e root of both sides, we're going to get x is equal to the e root of e, which we can write as e raised to power 1 over e. This is the biggest value of x you can plug into this formula. So, anytime you want to write an infinite tetration, or you pick up your calculator and you say, I'm going to compute the infinite tetration, this to the power this, you just keep going like that. Just know that if the number you're starting with, which is your x, is not less than this value, you're not going to get a finite value, you're going to get infinity. But if it is less than this, you should get a finite value. And that value can never be greater than e. So when I did the radical 2 raised to, to in the infinite iteration of the square root of 2, I knew my answer cannot be 4, even if the original equation said the square root of 2 raised to power x equals x. I knew if you plug in 2, see, square root of 2 raised to power 2 will be equal to 2. That's correct, because square root of 2 squared is 2. But if I did square root of 2 equals 4, this also is correct, but I knew because I was doing an infinite titration, my x cannot be 4 because the biggest number that can be on this side is e. And what's the value of e? 2.718 with many more digits. So that's the reason I did not consider this one. I know I didn't say it, but I didn't want to say all of these because now the video is getting longer. Okay, let's answer another question. If this is the biggest you can get from this formula, an infinite iteration, otherwise you're going to get infinity, and this is the biggest number for x you can plug in, what is the value of e to the 1 over e? Um, I'll leave that to you. Use your calculator to compute this. Okay, I will not leave it to you. I think this number here, so we can say when y is less than e, we also have x must be less than or equal to um, 1.44466, I think it's 6678, something like that. So whatever number you're trying to compute infinitely with a tetration, make sure that it is not bigger than this number. If it is bigger than this number, you're getting infinity. And confidently, you can do that to the square root of 2. Because the square root of 2, I knew that from when I was young, is 1.4142. This number is less than this, so this will converge. It does not go to infinity. So for those of you using your calculators trying to find the infinite titration of this, your calculator is doing it from the base. It's supposed to do it from the top. So this will converge to 2 if you titrate it infinitely. Okay, will it work for the cube root of 3? What about the fourth root of four or the fifth root of two? Try it. I'm going to let you leave it in the comment section. Let's wrap this up at this point. I have written what the maximum point before it goes to infinity is. It's this point. You go beyond this for the input, then you get infinity. Okay? If you try to stay here, you're going to get something that is equal to E or less than E as your conversion point. And uh, the minimum you can input... Um, now, if you, if you can, let me quickly address this. 
If you look at this minimum we got, you can also get it from the characteristic of the Lambert W function because the Lambert W function can only take values of x that are not less than negative 1 over e. So whatever you plug into the Lambert W function has to be like this, natural log of 1 over x cannot be less than this. So if you quickly do the math, it will confirm that this is the maximum you can enter. Why? Because see, if this is the input that you enter into the Lambert W function, ln of 1 over x must be greater than this. It has to be greater than this or equal to, let's say, minus, um, this is going to be minus 1 over e. So if I take the e of both sides, it means that 1 over x is greater than or equal to e to the negative 1 over e. This looks a bit awkward, but you're beginning to see that um, what if I write this as <laughs> x to the negative 1 is greater than or equal to e to the negative 1 over e, and when I flip both of them, what you see, this sign is going to change, then it means x will be less than or equal to, if I flip this, it's going to be e to the 1 over e. So this is it. That's why this is the maximum you can put in. Any other value less will be fine. But what is the minimum you can put in? It is this value. Well, this video is getting too long. Um, but just know that this is the minimum. Because convergence happens between when you have 1 over e to the e. Or you can write this actually this way. As um, 1 over e raised to power e. This is e raised to power 1 over e. You just switch these two and you get this. And what do you get here? Well, if you plug this value into this function, just like I did here, you will notice that what comes out of it, and you divide it this way, what's going to come out of it is 1 over e. And that is the minimum output you can get for a convergent infinite series. Not infinite series, infinite tetration, not series. <laughs> okay. Now, I hope this video has helped you answer some of the questions that you want answered. In another video, I'm going to talk about the characteristics of the Lambert W function. And I think from there, we can do some differentiation and integration and then establish some maxima and minima. Never stop learning. Those who stop learning, stop living. Bye-bye.